Wasn't that beautiful? You just heard our brand new Lima Symphony principal harp, Alix Raspe, perform Premier Arabesque by Debussy. Now, the harp is, of course, one of the most recognizable instruments, both in how it looks and in its sound, but we rarely get a chance to sit down with a real life harpist and talk about the instrument and, and learn more about it. So, we're so excited to do that today. So, Alix, welcome. Um, Tell us a little bit, when did you start playing the harp and how did you choose that instrument of all instruments? I actually started playing the piano when I was five years old and I just did not have an interest for it. I would lift the lid of our grand piano and I'd pluck the strings inside. So my parents were a little bit, my parents, they would always say they play the radio, they're not musicians. <laughs> so they didn't really know where this was coming from. We just happened to have a piano in our home. And um, so there was that aspect of it. Then later on, I was introduced to the movie, The Aristocats. At the end of the movie, the mom cat plays the harp. And I thought that that was pretty cool. A couple of years later, I went to go see The Nutcracker and I saw the harpist play the harp cadenza from The Nutcracker and then I was completely sold. So I started the harp when I was eight years old and now it's been almost 20 years. I can't even believe it. That's wonderful. So of course, The Nutcracker is one of the most famous harp solos. Can you play a little of that for sure. us today? Yeah, I'd love to. Great. So you started pretty young playing the harp. Um, it's a big instrument. Um, I imagine you need to stretch your hands pretty far. Is there a certain age or size you have to be to play the harp or can you start anytime? You can start anytime. I would recommend starting around age five is like the earliest. Um, there are different sizes of harps. You can start on a lever harp, which does not have the pedals, which we will demonstrate in a little bit. Um, so lever harps usually have like 20 some odd strings and they're a lot smaller in size. Um, but as you develop more and you want to play more challenging pieces, you want to start playing the pedal harp. Um, but you do not have to be a certain height for the pedal harp. I myself am five feet tall and I still play a six foot instrument. So. so the harp to me looks pretty complicated. There's a lot of parts on this thing. Um, take us through it. What are the different parts? How is it constructed? 
Yes, yeah, so this is a uh, Line and Healy Concert Grand harp, and it has 47 strings. It is made out of wood. This is a walnut wood, and then it has painted bronze on the column. So this is the harp column. And um, my strings here go from wire to gut strings, and then depending on how you like to keep your harp strung, it can be gut all the way to the top, or it goes to nylon strings. So that's like the plastic strings. So these gut strings are basically sheep gut. I know it's kind of gross to think about with almost a poly like a clear nail polish veneer surrounding them. Um, they're bow brand strings that are made in London and the UK, and um, they really make the harp have a really warm, rich sound. And so you mentioned pedals. Um, tell us about those and what are they for? The harp has seven pedals and there are three different functions. You can go from flat to natural to sharp. And this allows us to play in any key that we want to. And so it's almost like if you're thinking of a swan who's kind of floating over a lake, they look very graceful above water, but then they're pedaling like crazy below water. That's a lot of the time what harpists look like. Um, and these pedals help us just to play whatever piece that we want to play. So you talked about those strings. Some of them are nylon, some of them are made of intestines, which is amazing. Um, why are they different colors? How do the strings work? Yes, yeah, so the C's on the harp are red, and then the F's are black. Sometimes they look a little bluish, and that sort of helps us differentiate which notes which, and it also helps us see octaves very, very clearly on our instruments. So which one Actually, I'm going to ask the audience, do you think the longer ones are lower or higher? Any idea? Well, what's the sound like? What do you think? This is the longest one, and then this is the highest one. That's pretty easy to tell, right? So the longer the string, the lower the sound. So this instrument is so large, uh, I don't know how you carry this thing. Is it, does it take some special tools to transport it, and what does it weigh? So concert grand harps are 90 pounds. This is a 90 pound instrument. Sometimes it can be 80 to 90 pounds, depending on what the harp is. And obviously, I can't lift this instrument all on my own. I use my handy dandy harp cart. It's actually called the Harpo. And um, it's almost like a furniture dolly, and you place it underneath, and you just kind of roll the harp wherever you need to take it. And then when you bring it to your car, um, something you have to think about too as a harpist is, can your car fit your harp? So when I was your age, when I was playing the harp and I finally went to a concert grant instrument, we went to the dealership with the harp and <laughs> measured enough space in the back. So you have to make sure that you have six feet of space in the back of your car when you put the seats down because you eventually have to turn it horizontally and push it into the car and still have enough space for all the other can caboodle, including your harp cart. So you're not taking the harp anywhere on a motorcycle? No. <laughs> or a Prius or anything? You can't take it on the plane either. Can't take it on a plane, yeah. so it's, it stays where it is. Yeah. So everybody knows the harp is, is a really beautiful sounding instrument, but um, there are some special effects too, like glissandos and bisbigliando and, and harmonics. Can you show us some of those? Yeah, for sure. So the first technique that's super fun to play on the harp are glissandos. So you hear them a lot in dream sequences. Something else that's really beautiful and fun to play on the harp are harmonics. And so harmonics are, the way that you are able to create the sound is by pinching the string so it sounds an octave above. Kind of a cool little trick. Um, there's also something that I really love to play on the harp, and it's not always used, but it's called the thunder effect. And it's you strum the lowest strings of the harp, the wire strings, and it sounds like thunder. Very cool. Um, sometimes we have little knocking effects or bisbigliando. You'll hear that a lot in uh, movie scores.
So I love hearing stories about performances and, and funny things that happen. And I'm sure with an instrument as unique as the harp, you've got some funny performance stories. Yes, I definitely do. So something you have to think about with the harp is that strings can pop at any time due to temperature changes. Um, the first time I ever performed in Carnegie Hall, very nervous, very excited. Uh, my middle C string actually broke. So I was in a panic and the concert's about to start and I'm literally like just checking a few notes <laughs> and then I realized, oh my gosh, I don't have middle C, which as I'm sure you all know, middle C is very important. But I knew Romeo and Juliet Overture was coming up towards the end of the concert. I rolled the heart backstage, panicked, not knowing what to do. Luckily, I was able to text a friend who happened to be a few blocks away in New York City, a harpist, and she ran the string to me. I changed the string backstage, so by the time I had to play Romeo and Juliet, I had the string. But I will never forget that moment, and I always have backups now, like many, many backups. <laughs> That's terrifying. Oh, it was very, very scary. Alix, thank you so much for sharing uh, this beautiful instrument with us, and I want to thank our sponsors for Mornings with the Maestro, Keystone Meets, Lima Public Library, Rotary Club of Lima, and of course our season sponsor, Ohio Arts Council. Thank you to those sponsors for making this possible. I'm Andrew Crust, Music Director of the Lima Symphony Orchestra, and Alix is going to play one more piece for us. What do you have for us today? The Little Fountain by Samuel Pratt. 